Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Jake Hudson, and we are here with Dignity Washington celebrating the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Um, and welcome. We are an LGBTQ community of Catholics, our family, and friends. And uh, a couple things before we begin. Last week, uh, for those of you who were here, we had a lay led service, so we didn't have the formal anointing, sacrament of anointing that we typically have on the first Sunday of the month. So tonight we will be doing that. Um, so that will come after the homily. Uh, Father Alexei is our presider. We are an inclusive community, and by that we mean please use whatever reverent term for God you feel most comfortable. Um, please take a moment to silence any devices that make noise so that others are not disturbed. And uh, I think that's it. Settle back and Mass will begin. Thank you. Good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to all. And let us begin. Blessed is our God, creator, liberator, and sanctifying spirit now and forever. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. That we may gratefully celebrate these holy mysteries, let us look into our hearts humbly acknowledge our neglect to love and live happily with all, including ourselves in thought, word, and deed. Lord, you come to reconcile us to ourselves, each other, and our loving God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
you offer us healing for our wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Feeding us with your body and blood, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. And may our loving God have mercy on us, forgive us, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us continue to pray. Loving Creator, may the light of your truth guide us to your kingdom through a world so overshadowed by darkness. We glory in the gospel and the name Christian we claim. May your love continue to help make us what you call us and what we profess to be. And we ask this through Christ our liberator and companion who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever. from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, O seer, go flee away in the land of Judah, earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the kingdom, king's sanctuary and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Azekmiah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption to sonship as his own through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to be the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, 
according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, God has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplished all things according to his counsel and will. So that we were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the words of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption. As God's own people, to the praise of his glory, the word of the Lord. My sisters, my brothers, the Lord is with you. Let us listen to the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, whoever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the twelve went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, fasten your seatbelt. This could be a bumpy ride. <laughs> and if the oxygen mask comes down, make sure you put it on yourself first and then help your neighbor. Well, as usual, 
as I meditate and ruminate and chew on the gospel readings and what's going on in the world, so many things come to mind. In fact, so many people tell me, you know what? Your homilies, he says, are like a, a buffet or a smorgasbord or maybe, maybe even a salad bar. There's so much stuff there that it's almost too much. Well, I hope I give you something at least to nibble on so that you don't go home feeling you were on a diet. But if something doesn't fit, just don't put it on your plate. You could be allergic. So I hope I say something that is of value. Well, as I was thinking, I said, you know, they attribute to George Santayana the saying that if you forget history, you're condemned to repeat it. I think we're repeating it all over the place because we have pretty good forgetters. And I don't think only people who are considered old like me. But it gives us a lot to think about if we can remember. Well, as I'm thinking about what's going on in the world, I also remember that today was an anniversary. Bastille Day. Do you remember what that was? Well, the first thing that came to mind was a joke. This old curmudgeon walked up to the bar and asked the tender, I'll have a martini. And the tender says, Oliver Twist. He said, who the dickens cares? Just mix the martini. <laughs> well, my accent is on Dickens. And not so much on Oliver Twist, but on the tale of two cities. You remember how that began? I think it's going on now. You think that Charles Dickens didn't die back in the 1800s, but he's here in 2024, where he said it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us and we had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven and we were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period. Now he's talking about his age. That some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. Once again, the best and the worst. Well, it seems to me that another theologian, Woody Allen, made it more succinct when he said, more than at any other time in history, humankind faces a crossroads. One path leads to despair and utter hopelessness and the other to total extinction. Let's pray we have the wisdom to choose wise, wisely. Didn't he hit the head on the nail? Oh no, it was the nail on the head. Anyway, Dickens talked about two cities, but I don't think he was too original in that. Augustine did the same thing. The Civitas Dei and Civitas Terena, the, the city of God and the city of the world, of humanity. What I don't like about Augustine is that he seems to put them both apart. Are they apart? I don't think so. I think with Jesus we have the perfect example who puts opposites together. God and humanity, the city of God and our human city. They go together. And we are invited to keep them together because what God has joined together, we shouldn't be separating. Well, once again, I've been doing a lot of reading about Teilhard de Chardin these days. And he points out, he says, by virtue of the creation and still more so by the incarnation, nothing in this world is profane for those who have the eyes to see. And so I think all of us are like Bartimaeus at Jericho when Jesus is going by and Jesus says, what do you want? He says, I want to see. Now sometimes the translation says, I want to see again. So that means that one time he did have his sight, but he lost it. 
At other times it seems that, no, he was blind from birth. And I guess that might be true for all of us in one time or another. We could be blind from birth or we could be blind only from a certain time and we need and we want to see again. And what does we want to see? Well, I think Jesus put it in that prayer he taught us. We want to see God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. And while we're ruminating on these readings and all these other quotes, how is it that we see ourselves? I think that's very important. How do we see ourselves? In that first reading, Amos is in that northern kingdom of Israel. And he's told about, shut up. Why don't you go the other way to preach to them? Leave us alone. That reminds me of Jesus in his home, hometown, where he said, no prophet is honored in his own country or by his own kinsfolk. You got to go somewhere else to do it. And then Paul reminds us, hey, we're all in this together. We are asked to carry on the message. Do we see ourselves as in many ways prophetic? I think we are. Very, very much so. In fact, I think dignity fits in very well with the gospel. Because we too are sent. In today's gospel, Jesus is talking to his disciples, but he makes them apostles. That means people who are sent. And what are they sent to do? They're sent to carry on the mission of Jesus. They are commissioned to carry on the same thing. And what is it? Liberation. To free people who are in fortresses and prisons by these demons who keep them shut up. Well, as I know the history of Dignity Washington, it was conceived in the womb of the Immaculate Conception Shrine. It was the cafeteria. And there we fed that we were sent forth. For what? To liberate a lot of people like ourselves. And it was started by people who found that liberation in themselves but didn't keep it as a treasure just for themselves. But they wanted to invite other people to share that treasure and to go forth. In fact, if you remember, after George Washington University, it moved to Georgetown University. And then the Archbishop says to the president of Georgetown, you got to kick them out. That sounds like Amos up there with his king. And so what did, what did Dignity Washington do? We shook the dust off our feet and we went elsewhere with a message and we were received here at St. Margaret's. But did that stop us? No, it did not. We brushed off the dust and we continued spreading the good word. Well, Paul tells us to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth once again. And so we take that as our, as our mission. And maybe something people are not very well aware of, but back I think it was in 1990, the president who had to read the decree to Georgetown, uh, to Dignity Washington to get out of Georgetown, he gave a talk at Fordham University. And in that talk, he actually made a very, very important confession. That as a priest, what I was doing at that altar was obscene. That's a powerful word. Why was it obscene? If you know the story, he recalled that about 30 years earlier, he was a student in Valencia, Spain. And in Valencia, Spain, every year, the Dominicans who were in charge of most of the churches would have all the churches invite and preach to the Carta, Cartelinas, Cart, Cartela, Carte, Carteladas. I guess that's a word for the women of the street, the prostitutes. And what they would do in every church, they would preach and invite them, hear their confessions, and allow to give them that moment of grace, of absolution, in the body and blood of Christ. And he said that touched him so much that when he was telling Dignity to get out of Georgetown, 
and they couldn't use any of their sacred chapels, that it was obscene. It was. And it still is in the bastion, the Bastille, that we call the church in many places, which are keeping people imprisoned, not allowing them to be at home in the home that Jesus Christ gave all to, to all of us. So that's why I tie this in with the Bastille. We wait, Jesus was like, if you remember the story, there was a person who took the place of another person. Sidney Carton took the place of Dar Charles Darnay. Because they looked alike, they got away with it. They changed clothes. And Sidney took the place of Charles, and he was killed in place of Charles so that Charles could go home. It seems to me that that's the same thing that Jesus did. did. He came into the bastion of the world and he put on our clothes, but he kept it on. And I think he said the same thing that Charles, that Sidney said at the end as he's going to the guillotine. It is a far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done. It is a far, far better rest that I go to than I have ever known. And that is the mission that Jesus puts on all of us. How do we go out and help people who are imprisoned in their Bastilles to give them the chance to breathe and to live? How important that is. And a lot of times we think, well, we're not that important. Oh, yes, we are. And sometimes it's nothing more than giving an ear or two to listen to the stories of people and to tell them and to show them that they don't have to live with those shackles on, that there is freedom. Well, when I thought about that too, I thought about a song written by the Flirtations. Has anyone ever heard the Flirtations singing? There you go. They have a beautiful song called, You Can Be Anything. And there's all kinds of restrictions about who you can be or who you say you are, and that's still going on. And he says, but you can be anything you want to be. But I love the refrain of that song. The only measure of your words and your deeds will be the love you leave behind when you're gone. And that's the reward we get, is the opportunity to leave that love behind as we spend our lives, first of all, accepting freedom and then giving it to others or helping others to accept their freedom. Because it's not something you can give, you can offer, you can show the way, but everyone must take themselves. Well, that reminds me of another story about a therapist. And I might have shared this before, but I think it's right to what we're talking about, this liberation. Because I know that in South America, the Vatican was against all those liberation theologians, that they sounded too Marxist. Well, because Marxism also wanted liberation. Did it succeed? Well, that depends on how you look at it. But all theology, all spirituality has to do with liberation. And that is allowing people to be who they are. Again, Oscar Wilde said that I saw it on a t-shirt not too long ago. Be who you are, because everybody else is taken. And so we need to do that. But how does that happen? And a lot of times, we have to be like Sidney Carton. We have to help people to realize that. Well, this is the story about the therapist. He asked a long-term client to look into his eyes and tell him what she saw. He says, picture my eyes as a mirror. What do you see? And she responded, I see a person filled with a great life. Someone who is excited that she is finally able to find the joyous little girl in herself who had been there before, but was lost due to abuse. She has now combined that child with the full grown woman she is now. Then after a pause, she added with a big smile, and she is thoroughly happy about it now. 
yes, the therapist replied, that's what I see too. Given this, the second question I have for you is, how did you get to this point? When you first came to see me, you were not in this place. Expecting to get a detailed review, this is what the therapist got instead. You mean you really don't know? No, he replied. Well, it was easy, she said. When I first came to in to see you, I simply watched the way you sat with me. Then I began sitting with myself in the same way. Wow. Wasn't that what Jesus did? Jesus came to sit with us, to help us to realize not only who he was or is, but who we are and to accept ourselves. That's the driving away of the demons who are trying to tell us we're somebody else. And that's why they call it possession. Somebody else takes possession so that the real person is not there. So we're all like locked up in that Bastille until Jesus comes and takes our place to show us how to get out and how to get rid of those demons. He's driving them back. And he says, send them to repent. What is their repent? Get rid of all the other junk that you think that you are not. That you are not beloved of God. That you are not made in God's image and likeness. You have to reclaim and take that again. Well, once again, I hope some of these ruminations meant something to you. But also, I ask you to listen to yourself. What is your story? How were you liberated? How were you set free? Can you hear the call now to go and do likewise the others? Again, I keep repeating this from St. Pablo Picasso, the image of that bouquet with hands and the saying, that the meaning of life is to find your gift, which is you, and the purpose of life is to give it away to share it. And a lot of us are probably like Jeremiah who says, <laughs> I'm too young. Don't, don't say you're too young. I know who I'm calling and I know who I am sending. And then once again, I like what uh, Yana Starfield said, Stanfield said, that I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that I can do. So that even that little bit that we do, that means something. It could be that moment of liberation for someone else to take that gift, to find their gift, and to share it, to give it away. And so we come back to the refrain from that song by the flirtations. The only measure of your words and your deeds will be the love you leave behind when you're gone. Amen.
Praise to you, God. You sent your only begotten to live among us and bring us salvation. Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the only begotten. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity and heal our infirmities. Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, the Consoler and Comforter. Your unfailing power gives us strength in our bodily weakness. Be God, heals us in Christ. All gracious God, ease the suffering of those who seek your healing touch, and enrich those who choose to share their gifts in a world yearning for, for leaders, prophets, and friends. And we ask this through Christ, our liberator and our brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Father and Mother in heaven, through this anointing grant all those seeking comfort and their suffering the blessing of your divine healing. When we are afraid, grant us courage. When afflicted, grant us patience. When dejected, offer us hope. And when alone, assure us of the support of your holy people. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I think we already professed our faith right from the very beginning. And so let us with trusting and hopeful hearts present our needs to our generous, gracious God. Our response this evening will be, God, receive our prayer. That God's people may not fear 
or silence prophetic voices who challenge, it, who challenge us to be more faithful to the gospel covenant. We pray to the Lord. God, receive our prayer. That mutual acknowledgement and repentance for the conflicts of the past may drive from our world the demons of war and heal the wounds of discord. We pray to the Lord. God, receive our prayer. That those who confront our complacency by their, so by their words and example may lead society to a conversion that fosters justice and dignity for all. We pray to the Lord. God, receive our prayer. That the sacrament of anointing and our and our community's compassion may bring healing and strength to all those who are sick, especially those who receive the sacrament this evening. We pray to the Lord. God, receive our prayer. For all in our community who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, especially Anne, Bill, Cynthia, Dennis, Jim, Karen, Lisa, Mark, Paul, Sue, Tim, and who else? Tony and Peggy and Clayton. <clears throat> for these, for those who are listed in our book of intentions, may the healing hand of God touch them and guide their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. God, receive our prayer. For those in our community who have died, especially Edwin Smith, Roger Serchowski, Patrick McNeilis, Jim Pennick, Bernie D'Elia, our family and friends, those who have died from COVID-19. And as we are on the anniversary or approaching the anniversary of their deaths, Hugh Gallagher, Jerry Colfer, and David Goldberg. And for who else shall we pray? Mary, Mom and Dad, Sarah, Sophia. For those who are written in our book of intention as well, may they all be at the great banquet of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. God, receive our prayer. And for what else and for whom else shall we pray this evening? May the evil impulse that resulted in yesterday's shooting stay there and May our nation recover from that in a, in a healthy way and may we come back to one another in a way that uh, allows conversations about political issues to not result in violence. We pray. God, receive our prayer. <clears throat> God, receive our prayer. In thanksgiving for the life of Jim Holloway, he would have turned 70 today. God, receive our prayer. For these and for the intentions we hold in silence, we pray to the Lord. God, receive our prayer. Gracious, loving God, receive our prayer and grant the fulfillment of all that we ask for in faith this day. For we make our prayer in Jesus' name.
Let us ask that we, our prayer, and this our offering may be truly acceptable to God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Look upon our offerings, benevolent God, as we make our prayer to you, transform them into spiritual nourishment so that consumed they might sanctify all who receive and believe through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our God is with you. Amen. Let us lift up our hearts. Up Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to offer you thanks, gracious God, the source of life. You never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence, and even now at work in our midst, with mighty hind and outstretched arm, you liberated your people Israel from imprisoning slavery and leading them through the desert to the land of freedom. Now, as we, your church, make our pilgrimage of faith, you always accompany us by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead us along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Gracious God, in the fullness of time you sent Jesus the Christ to share our fragile humanity. And through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, you opened the path from slavery to liberty, brokenness to health, from fear to trust, from pride and conceit to reverence for you. How wonderful the work of your hands are, God. As a mother tenderly gathering her children and as a father full of compassion for your offspring, you embraced the people as your own and filled us with longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. And from us, you raised up Jesus, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers were satisfied. Jesus healed the sick though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, yet death would hunt him down. With a love stronger than death, to you he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. Loving God, may your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over our earthly gifts of bread and wine, that together we might become the body and blood of Christ. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to table with those he loved. He took bread and thanked you, God of all creation. He broke the bread among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body given for you. When supper was ended, he poured out a final cup of wine and again blessed you. He passed the cup among his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, of the new and the everlasting covenant, which is poured out for you and for all as a sign of my undying love. Whenever you do this, remember me.
the mystery of faith. Holy God, we commemorate Jesus, your and our beloved, as we bring you this offering. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in the spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of creation. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in love, and faithful to the breaking of the bread. Rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, the whole church offers you thanks and praise, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, all who minister in your name, all your holy people, and all whose lives bring hope to our world. Lord of the living and the dead, awaken to the undying light of pardon and peace those fallen asleep in faith, all our beloved deceased family members and friends, members of our dignity community, victims of treachery and violence, and those who have died alone, unloved, and unmourned. Gather them all into communion with Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joseph, her spouse, and all your saints. Then at last will all creation be one and all divisions healed, and we shall join in singing your praise through your and our beloved, Jesus the Christ. For through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O gracious God, forever and ever. Now in unity and in solidarity, let us dare to pray as Jesus taught us. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all that makes us anxious, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sinfulness, but on our faith, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with each other some sign of peace.
This cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? And this bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We then who are many and diverse are one body, for we all partake of the one bread and the one cup. Blessed are we called to share in this wedding feast of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Body of Christ, Michael. Body of Christ, Larry. The body of Christ, Bob. Body of Christ, Rico.
Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. <clears throat> Having consumed these gifts, we pray, loving God, that by our participation in this mystery, its liberating effects upon us may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Peter Edwards and I serve as Vice President of Dignity Washington and, and once again I want to welcome to our service. Um, is there anyone here who's been here for the first time or returning after a long absence who would like to say hi? Okay. Um, grab a bulletin and see if there's anything interesting in there to read. Um, and um, um, keep, keep cool. Have a good week. And thank you to everyone who celebrated Mass with us today. Um, I will not remember everyone's name, so I'm not going to try. But I really appreciate everyone who served. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. As I pronounce the blessing, let us extend our hands over all. May God bless you, hold and keep you. May God's mercy shine on you. Guide your work and guard your resting. Keep your love forever new. And may the blessing of our loving and merciful God, the source of our being, the means of our liberation and the breath of our life come upon us all this evening and remain with us forever. We have come here to worship. Let us go forth together to love and serve God, one another, and all the people in peace. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 